NASA's Apollo program fulfilled a desire as old as humanity. It was the first time humans left Earth orbit and visited another world. Over four decades have passed since we last set foot on the moon. But now, a new breed of explorer is looking skyward in the hope of returning. This time, for good. Yeah, some people that you talk to, they're pretty surprised when you say you're doing space research. Back to the moon, back to the future, and this time, back to stay. When the President Bush mentioned, let's go back to the moon, but this time to stay, I said, this is it, this is my job, now I can get involved. An outpost on the moon has been a staple of science fiction for years, of course. But researchers at the University of New South Wales are actually planning to make this dream a reality. They've been working on ways to build on the moon, to source power, even to mine. In fact, they're planning a lunar spaceport that will one day launch journeys to Mars and beyond. And I think it's a natural for, for human beings to look for resources. And mi mining provides resources. NASA's prospecting missions have revealed our seemingly barren moon to be a treasure trove of priceless resources. Right for the picking are rare elements, a crucial ingredient for modern life's most indispensable technologies. Rare earth minerals are going into the iPads and the iPods and the electronics and this and that, and it's growing, so we need more. The moon could even fuel our future with helium-3, a non-radioactive nuclear fusion fuel. But unlocking this potentially bountiful cosmic quarry presents many challenges. The natural environment of the moon is very different to Earth, so you can't use the same techniques as you would on Earth. For instance, gravity is much weaker on the moon. It's about one-sixth of what it is here on Earth, which means if you want a machine big enough to have enough traction on the moon, it would have to have six times the mass. Now, launching all that weight from Earth would be prohibitively expensive, given one kilogram costs about $25,000 to launch into space. To put anything in space, it costs so much money and it takes so much energy to do it. So it makes a lot more sense to actually get your resources that you want to use in space from space. So we have to come up with new ways. The physics are different. There's so many different things. So we have to basically start from scratch. Even the moon's surface is very different to anything on Earth. Over millions of years, meteorites have just bombarded the surface continuously. It's, uh, it's very compact, but it's sort of broken up the solid structure into a very fine powder. It may look innocuous, but this sticky, abrasive material called regolith can wreak havoc with machinery. To see if their mining technology was up to the task, the team began to search for earthly material that mimic the chemical and physical properties of moon dust. To make concrete, but here's the real stuff. So this, this is the closest thing to moon dust we have on Earth? Yes. This is actually the byproduct, and it is from a basalt quarry, where they quarry rock to make concrete. So this is a waste product? Yes, you're right. This, actually, the quarries throw this away because it's too fine to use for anything. They showed it to me, and I said, no. You know, this is like gold for me because it's so much. And they said, you got it for free. To make the mock moon dust, the material is sieved and separated by grain size. It's then recombined according to a specific recipe. The result is ALS-1, a lunar soil simulant that closely resembles samples brought back by the Apollo astronauts. Beneath the loose surface layer, the regolith becomes increasingly dense and hard. So for realism, they compact the simulant. OK, so the 30 centimetres down, it's kind of... Oh, yeah, that's quite solid. Gee, that's amazingly hard. I, I imagine mining that stuff would be a real challenge. That's exactly right. The problem is it's so dense that you can't just cut it, like you know, on Earth. 
Why not put explosives in it, blow it apart and dig yeah. it? <laughs> That's right. That's exactly how I started to deal with it. But you create the dust on top and it stays up for 17 days and you might even be able to see it from Earth on air. On they needed to find a different way. After many years of experimenting, Leonard has come up with a mining technology to fit the lunar condition. It's called suction extraction with pneumatic transportation. It's a space vacuum cleaner, basically. A brilliantly simple idea for extracting the moon's mining wealth using gas pressure. It's a highly efficient system because it uses the powdery characteristic of the regolith and the low lunar gravity as resources. Okay, ready? So the big moment. Ooh. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> it moves quickly. Yes, yes. It races through. It's a remarkably clean process, isn't it? You're mining this sort of dusty stuff. Uh, yes. And it's just completely dust free in the environment. Yes. Material is transported from the high pressure entry to a low pressure exit point where it collects. Eventually, this will lead to a filtration unit where the minerals are separated and sent to a processing plant. Leonard's system requires minimal equipment to be sent from Earth because many of the parts, like the glass pipes, can be made from moon materials. So instead of bringing everything, let's just send the tools that help us to live off the land. The mining operation will be predominantly automated, with robots doing the bulk of the hard labour. But this doesn't mean the moon won't be populated. Astronauts could use the moon as a launch pad to explore further into the solar system. But first, they must build a base. The structures that we're looking at building are basically to protect against radiation and meteorites and the temperature effects of space. The problem with building structures on the moon is that you can't make bricks there like we do on Earth. After all, there's no water to mix with the dirt. So the researchers have come up with an ingenious idea of mixing in other substances like sulphur and polymers with the moon dust to create really strong, sturdy bricks. We are trying to use sulphur because it's on the moon, it's a natural product. And polymer, we can also make on the moon. We would just need heat that's available on the moon. And then we can create concrete out of waterless material. Yes. Leonard's vision is to build dome structures to protect people and equipment. Inside, Lightweight inflatables will create pressurised living environments. But how will we power this future moon colony? If you're putting people there or robotics or other equipment, you need energy to supply whatever you're doing. During the day, solar arrays can generate electricity for habitats, life support systems and machinery. But power needs to be stored for the lunar night, which can last for more than 300 hours in some places. Our solution is using the resources of the moon to create a very simple technology, what we call a thermal battery. You just take the lunar soil, which is basically a, a basaltic material, sinter it into a solid block. These bricks can store heat collected from the sun, which can be harvested later. So this is the final cooked product? Yeah, so once we uh, sinter it in the oven at uh, 1100 degrees, uh, yeah, you get something like that out. Gee, it's uh, incredibly heavy. You get the feeling it would hold quite a lot of heat. For about a metre cubed uh, material, you could store enough energy to supply about one kilowatt of electricity constantly over 300 hours. Really? Yeah. The moon's lack of atmosphere means there's no convective heat loss. So you can effectively have this battery store heat almost indefinitely. As well as having these amazing thermal properties, the material is incredibly strong. We just experimented with how much compressive strength the material can handle. Uh, 30 ton on something like this. This is like steel, well, but, uh, even more than steel. It's really important to have these strong and heat resistant building materials on the moon. One, to withstand the continual meteorite bombardment that happens up there, but also to be able to handle the tremendous heat of landing and launching space vehicles. 
enabling the moon to act as a stepping stone to other planets. How about having a refueling station to create a space economy that you can sell fuel for rockets to Mars, fuel for refueling satellites? This service station in the sky could resupply ships with propellants, manufactured from the mined space resources. Whether ethically we should be mining in space is a debate we're still to have. But Leonard believes moon mining in some form will be part of humanity's future as we reach for the outer solar system and for the stars.